how the Electoral College works and why faithless electors aren't likely to change the outcome. The Electoral College was established in 1787 in Article II of the United States Constitution. The Founding Fathers created it as a compromise between allowing Congress to select the president and relying solely on the popular vote. The process of election affords a moral certainty that the office of president will never fall to the lot of any man who is not in an eminent degree endowed with the requisite qualifications. Founding Father Alexander Hamilton wrote in 1788, To create the Electoral College, each state is given one elector for each of its U.S. representatives and senators. This means that states with larger populations get more electors. There are a total of 538 electoral votes, and a candidate needs to win a majority, which is at least 270, to be elected president. When voters cast their ballots on election day, they're really voting for the electors that the state party has nominated, and not directly for the presidential candidate. Electors' names do not usually appear on the ballot, but once the votes are tallied, the winning ticket's slate of electors are appointed. Nearly every state is winner-take-all, which means that the party that gets more than 50% of the votes in that state gets to appoint all of its electors. Maine and Nebraska are the exceptions. They allocate their electors by congressional district, which means that their electors can be split. If no candidate receives an absolute majority of electoral votes, then the House of Representatives selects the president. This system means that sometimes a president is elected who doesn't secure the majority of the popular vote. John Quincy Adams, Rutherford B. Hayes, Benjamin Harrison, and George W. Bush have all become president without winning the popular vote. And Donald Trump lagged behind in the popular vote in 2016, too. Electors are pledged to vote for their party's candidate, and many states have laws in place to penalize electors who break their pledge. A faithless elector could vote for a different candidate or choose not to vote, and some have in the past. If enough do so, a candidate's number of votes could theoretically drop below 270, even if that number was secured during the election. This has never happened before, but a movement of electoral college members calling themselves the Hamilton electors, after Alexander Hamilton's reasoning for the existence of the electoral college, are trying to sway enough electors to block Donald Trump's election. In order to remove Trump's electoral majority, they would need to persuade at least 37 of the electors pledged to Trump not to vote for him. But even then, some state parties could replace those electors with alternates. And even if that doesn't happen, then the Republican-controlled House would get to select the winner.